Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your ever distracted yarn host Jennifer. Ever distracted. Today's going to be a little bit of a different video because while we are definitely going to have some tea, I'm going to bring a spoon. You came to work with me? Look at Bentley. In case you can't see his little tail waggling. Um... And here comes Scarlet parading down the stairs. Which I'm sure she will run in here because she has to get belly rubbins in the morning. I see you. Don't come in here. All right. Taste Tuesday. We're having some tea. This is the tea that was sent to me last week in Happy Mail. Of course, she popped the door. I mean, this is from Tea Leaves. This is Hazelnut Caramel Rooibos Tea. I really need to fix that door. <laughs> Hang on. All right, it's properly locked. <clears throat> Hazelnut caramel rooibos tea in my tea leaves diffuser. Um, because I didn't bring a spoon, we're just gonna, gonna give it a little shake in the bag. Make sure it's properly dispersed. And hopefully we're measuring out the correct amount. Otherwise, it's going to be really strong or really weak, whatever the case may be. And now, I think I broke the bag. I broke the bag. So now it doesn't close. <laughs> it's just the kind of day we're having here today on Cinnamon Stitches. All right, we're going to let that steep. Make sure it's not leaking. I'm going to have to transfer this to a Ziploc. Actually. Voila. Voila. Yarn bag to the rescue. <laughs> All right, so today, while that's steeping, I showed this in yesterday's video. I want to do something unique today. Something we've never done here. Something I've never done it ever. Um, I got a blending board in Happy Mail from Teresa. Tracy. 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 And <clears throat> again, thank you so much, Tracy. <clears throat> I wanted to play with it. And I'm like, well, I'm going to play with it. People have had questions about the blending board. What is it? What does it do? How do you do that? So we're going to figure it out together. This may be a hot mess, total disaster. I don't know. I'm going to flip you guys down towards the table. I'm going to grab fiber and really crinkly bags. And we're going to play with the blending board and see if we can make a roll egg. Now, what is a roll egg? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I've watched a bunch of videos on how to do this, so never you fear. What you do is you take fibers and you put them on here and you recomb them. And the reason you do that is so that you can make your own color weight, if you will, to spin. <coughs> it's called a roll leg because it's rolled up. I'm not using that neon green, but I do have fiber here. <coughs> I am going to blend some cotton. This is just 100% Egyptian cotton with maybe some really bright colors and see what happens. We're just seeing what happens. So these are all fibers that I got from, I believe, Paradise Fibers. And what we're going to do is we're going to play. And we're going to record playing. And apparently we're going to weave in hot pink hair. <laughs> and we're going to see what happens and see if I can figure out how to make this roll leg. <clears throat> so what you do is you put the fibers on here. Because these are like teeth. It's like a dog brush. It's, it, it feels and looks like a dog brush. Like a shed brush. Same thing with this. It's very... Uh, medieval torture you put it on there you brush it flat then you use the dowels 
to roll it. I don't like the way these feel at all. They're a little bit powdery. So, we're <laughs> this ought to be interesting. Sensory issues. All right, I'm going to figure out how to adjust my camera so it's going to point in the correct direction, and we're going to go from there. All right, now, we've got all of our supplies ready. <clears throat> our tea is here. So that when that is done steeping, it is still raining down. <clears throat> All right. Like I said, I have never done this before. Never once. And I don't know if this is going to turn out, but good thing for me, this is fiber that I don't really care for a whole lot. So we're just going to kind of play with it and see what happens. <laughs> I don't know that I want to use the yellow. kind of thinking of using like this burgundy color. So this is just... I think this is Corydale fiber. This is not. This was meant for spinning. Or not, no. This was not meant for spinning. This was meant for felting. It's not real soft. I'm hoping that mixing the cotton in will make it slightly softer. Like I said though, we're practicing. So it's better to use fiber that is not like... Um, I have some bamboo fibers over there. I have some really nice merino wools that are meant for, for um, spinning. These have shorter fibers. They're a little bit harder to spin. So there's that. So from what I saw in the videos is people were just like laying it and stretching it like that and making these pretty little Like I said, don't have a clue what I'm doing. <laughs> it will all work out in the end. Because in the end, only kindness matters. There. All right. Put that on there. Let's see what? We got hot pink too. We might as well stay in the pink family, right? Hot pink. If you are an expert spinner and you see that I'm doing something wrong, please be kind in the comments. There is nothing worse than feeling like an idiot because you don't know what you're doing and you get somebody going, oh, you're stupid. Like, I don't, trust me, I get that a lot on this channel. You're doing it wrong. Without being helpful, just you're doing it wrong. All right. I'll put that in there. And boop it that way. All right. Let's see. Let's move some of this. See, this is what I was attempting to spin. But this is the blue, but that's also the neon green that I said I wasn't going to put in here. Come on. All right, now what we're supposed to do, I'm turning this because we just feel like it would be easier to go this way. You're suppo supposed to push it, apparently. <laughs> See, this is why we practice with the not so good yarns. Let's see if we can roll it flat. Get it in there. Yeah, it's just pulling off. It's not going in at all. Am I doing it backwards? Nope, it won't go that way at all. What the heck? Why does this look so much easier on mine? Yeah, it's not going at all in there. At all. See, this is why I film things. This is why... This is why I film things, because you expect it to go one way, and it doesn't, and it's okay, because we're beginners, and we have no idea what we're doing. I wonder, I don't know, I don't know, maybe we need to stretch it a little more, and get it really in there. 
without stabbing our fingers. I don't think that is what it's supposed to do at all. Let's try again. You know what? Let's try the cotton and see if the cotton works better or maybe... Yep. Not a clue. And there wasn't directions with this. So I have no idea. Right, yeah, it's just coming off. What the hell? <laughs> Alright guys, you're going to have to help me out. All of the tines are facing like this way. But the handle is up here. Am I supposed to be doing it this way? Because that makes more sense, right? It's actually gripping this way. You guys doing it backwards. Alright, maybe I was doing it backwards. I don't know why the handle... This is not easy to do. Yep, I was doing it backwards. Apparently a handle goes towards me. That, that works. All right, we figured it out. Now everything pressed down. That means we need to add more cotton. We're doing it backwards. See? That's why Cinema Stitches shows you how to do things and how to screw things up because <laughs> we don't all start off as experts. And I know I've got a lot of comments like, oh, your spinning is doing so amazing. Like, you're doing fantastic. It may look like I'm doing fantastic, but there's blunders that you guys don't see. What I'm trying to do is get this all smoothed out. Now, the cotton does have some natural bits in there which this process should help eliminate from what I understand. I'm gonna put some more, we'll do the pink on this side. Yep, we were doing it backwards. I have no idea what this is gonna turn out like. That is painful on the fingers. Get some more of that blue. All right, we got it. We got it. Yeah, we got it. Oh, we got it. We don't have hot chocolate, but we got hot tea. It's brewing and steaming. Don't yell at me because I know I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that because it messes up the tines, but I don't feel like those tines are moving at all. And I have no idea how thick I'm supposed to go with this. So we're just going to go. We're just going to go and see what happens. And again, I don't know if this is going to be a rollable fiber because, or a spinnable fiber, because all of these fibers are really short. And you can spin short fibers, but it is on the difficult side to spin short fibers. But this will be a wool cotton blend. Unlike anyone else's in the whole entire world. Alright. Put that in there. Well, maybe we'll throw some. I don't want to I don't want to do too many colors. I don't want it to look like somebody threw up in here. This is kind of fun though. I feel like I'm making an art project.
And because I'm getting so much coming off the end, I think this might have to be towards the end. Because this, these don't hold a whole lot. By the way, this is called a blending board. And I have seen a lot of people on the internet do this with art yarn. So they create art yarn with all these lumps and bumps in it when they spin it. And it looks really cool. All right. Oh, I think we got that all worked in. All right. Like I said, I don't know how much I'm supposed to actually... I feel like this is supposed to hang off the end more. Hopefully it comes out. All right, so from what I have seen on the internet, you're supposed to do this and pinch it. And because these are short fibers, I don't know that I'm gonna struggle with this part. And then you roll it. They see me rolling, I'm the hating. And we need, we need one of these. This is just a darning needle, a wool needle. I'm using it to pick up some of the fibers that are still stuck in there. This is not a learning video, guys, because, I, like I said, well, it's learning for me, but I'm not trying to teach nobody how to do nothing. And you're supposed to pull back and stretch the fiber. Ooh. Which I didn't think would work. My hands don't want to work today. Ugh. I could see doing this listening to music because there's 800 songs stuck in my head right now. <sighs> All right, that is my first roll egg. Not bad for a beginner. And then I've always seen them, they do this. They smooth it out. And then you slide one dowel out. Which, because my hands are not working today, is probably not going to be easy for me to do. Yep. No grip whatsoever. <laughs> and Juju is not around. Oh, it's a good thing I didn't put tea in that cup yet. Alright. We might have to ask for help with that one. Let's pour the tea while we're waiting. Let's see what happens. Let's see if this is good tea. I do have Splenda on hand in case this needs to be sweetened at all. I didn't even read you guys the ingredients for this tea. All right, it is rooibos, apple, pieces, cocoa nib, natural caramel flavor, marigold flowers, natural hazelnut and chestnut flavors, and blue corn, corn flowers. For some reason, I have not been making a full cup, and I don't know what is up with that. Oh, look at that. We have more plastic right there to set that on. All right. That's a dark tea. That's a very dark tea. Very hot. Definitely needs sugar. Ooh, that's good. If you like nutty teas, you will like this one. It has to say sugar. That's not sugar. It's Linda. And of course, I have nothing to stir it with. We'll let that sit and dissolve while we try to figure out what we're going to do with this roll egg. I think perhaps I should have... Oh. Alright, twist and works. I should have offset them a little more so I had more hand grip. <gasps> I did it! I just needed to warm my hands up. And then you pull this off. And this is a roll egg. And you can spin from the end of this. 
And the reason it's called a roll egg is because it's rolled up. Isn't that cute? All right, let's see if we can make another one while our tea is sitting there cooling off a little bit because I burned my mouth a little bit. Can you fluff this part up a little bit? And you grab it and you pull. Maybe we can do that again. Grab it and pull. This part's on the thicker side. Like I said, I'm having grip issues this week, so I can't I can't grip any harder than I am. There we go. Offset this even more so I can grab it. See, this looks terrible. I feel like it's thicker than it was. Now I'm going to screw it up. See? Just leave it alone, Jen. Leave it alone. This one's going to be funky. This one's going to be real funky. You know what? Try to push it back in there a little bit. Otherwise, it's falling apart on me. I do apologize if you're one of those people that are really good at doing this kind of stuff and you're watching this, you're like, oh, and it's painful to you. I get it. <laughs> it's painful to me too. I might cry. This is what it's like being a beginner, folks. You just got to kind of go with it. Nope. Yep, we'll just do it that way. That looks like a hot mess down on this end. There we go. All right, we're cooking with fire. And I think we have enough on either end where I can properly grip it. Your chicken, how loose is your goose? Oh, man, I'm gonna have to go turn the air on. It's supposed to be a hundred degrees. Well, not a hundred, a hundred. Wow, it's supposed to be <laughs> almost 90 degrees today. I don't have the air on yet. I am pushing this against my right under my boob so it's on my rib cage pushing so I can get leverage. Yeah, I think that is working out. And then I bet the next one's gonna be even better because we know what we're doing. Kinda. There we go. Roll it. Roll it. Roll it. Roll it. Everything all compact down right now. Oh, I did it. I did it. I did it. <gasps> look at that. Is it beautiful? No. Does it look as good as the first one? No. <laughs> Still did it. Look at that. I made two. I'm just going to call these our little worms. Little worms. This one is definitely thicker and more compact than the first one because I didn't get a good pull on it. But There we go. This one looks way better. Alright, let's try again. Let's try our tea. Give it a little 
swirl. Try not to spill it all over the blending board, dummy. Mm. Very good. Very, very good. Did I spill any? Nope. I don't think I did. All right. Put some more of this cotton. Some cotton. No, oh, some cotton. This cotton is ridiculously soft. I hope that I'm able to spin it properly. I really do. Let's feel in a little bit chunky. See, I think all the videos I've seen, I don't hear this noise in their videos. I'm wondering, did they like get rid of the noise? Because that's kind of irritating. <laughs> that's a little bit irritating. All right. Do we want to do the same colors? Or do we want to mix it up and do yellow? I think we're going to try some of the yellow. This yellow has given me nothing, nothing but problems. Like nothing but problems. It, it just kept breaking apart on me. When I was working with it. I was getting on my nerves. I think the key is to do this not too thick, not too thin. This is pretty yellow. It is beautiful. I think it'll be beautiful blended with that white cotton. And hopefully it makes it a little more stable because this stuff did not... It didn't want to play nice. Like at all. All right. My little, I need to figure out the proper names for these things because this is a paddle. <laughs> it's a brush. I don't know what it's called. Carding brush, maybe? Yeah, see how we have some of those uh, cotton chunks? At least doing this all the fibers are going to be facing the same direction because in this state they were just all over the place and that's why I think it kept breaking apart. Alright. I'll do some of this color. These colors are supposed to be 90s colors. Like from the 90s. I think it's hilarious, which is why I bought it, because I was born in the 70s, but like my most vital years was in the 90s. That's when like all life started to happen. Oh, see, that went on so much easier. You see that? actually going into the board the correct way some of these were and I think this purple needs to go in there I just do I feel like it needs to go I saw somebody do this the other day and they were doing snow white color so it was like the colors of snow white's dress I was like oh that's so pretty oh that hurts my finger a little bit I'm pushing too hard Okay, this reminds me of the Cheshire Cat. <laughs> A lot. Does that look like the Cheshire Cat to you? Right. Let's throw some more cotton in there just for good measure. Alright, a light hand seems to go better with the cotton. Seems to go on better with the light hand. Where you're just like barely touching the top. 
this interesting to anyone else but me. I, I kid you not, before I even started doing any of this craft, where I was before I was spinning, before I was doing any of this, I would watch videos on this because I am obsessed with yarn. And I'm just I've always been fascinated on the whole process. Start to finish how yarn is created. And I find it really soothing and relaxing to watch. See, that is so cool looking to me. Isn't that cool? All right, I have hope. All right, let's see if we can roll this one up. We need to move our roll legs up there. I need to make sure that I have enough room on the end so that I can grip it and pull it apart. Phone. Uh, probably Mr. Cinnamon. Nope. <laughs> uh, must be a new person to the south. <laughs> As a notification for my ring doorbell, um, people post on there and they post like questions about or like, hey, I found a lost dog, etc. Right? And Somebody posted, Is anybody else finding lizards in your house? Now, I'm going to say that I live in an area where we get a lot of military transplants in this area. Because we're not far from Quantico. There's actually a lot of military and government installations in the area. So we get a lot of transplants. I, myself, am a transplant. <laughs> and... Um, we have lizards and skinks and stuff here, which I love. I love seeing the lizards. We had lizards in Michigan, but because the weather's not real hot, like it was very rare to see a skink or a lizard unless you went to like a nature preserve. I also lived in, I lived right outside the city of Detroit. I lived in a very urban neighborhood and, um, there was, there was not a lot of wildlife. I'll say that. And so it made me laugh that somebody's asking about, all right, I need to use my chest again. It makes me laugh that somebody's asking if they're, anybody else having a problem with lizards? Babe, there's lizards everywhere. They just live here. <laughs> we don't have as many lizards as like Florida or probably other places, but there are definitely lizards here. I have lizards that live all around my house and frogs and all kinds of amphibious life. All right, I'm gonna try to separate that. All right, Rolag number three. Not bad, different unique colors. Kind of like that, reminds me of the sunset. Oh, and I did this one too tight. But I left a bigger handle and this one has like a mess up on the end, so it's flat, which is helping me grip. Which I may have to cut the other one and make sure I can grip that one better. Rolling number two, or number three, not number two, number three. There we go. Number three looks better than number two, but not as good as number one. I need to find a cute little container to put these in. And don't worry guys, when I roll these, when I spin these, I will show you what that looks like. Look at that. Look at that! This is no doubt gonna be some art yarn. All right, now let's see if we can grab the rest of this because this is where we failed last time. 
where we struggled. We hit the struggle bus. We kept on going. So yeah, that made me laugh. That helped that my teacup is right there in the way. And there's stuff surrounding me on my, my desk is a hot mess right now. Like I got fiber on one side of me. Tea on the other side of me. This is already going better than the last time. I'm just gonna get that cotton. That cotton don't want to come out. So maybe we should lay the, the wool down first and then put the cotton on top. Maybe. Ow. I think if my hands were cooperating this would be a lot easier on me because my hands are acting a fool lately. There we go. There we go. We did it. Leg number four. Where's my flat? Flat end. There we go. Seems like the second half is the one that's not as perfect, so we're gonna have to practice with that. There we go. Cute little, they're so cute. They look like little snails. See, now I could see taking this and felting it and making it look like a little snail. <sighs> Ideas. <laughs> we got a pile to start with. All right, let's try one more. We're going to put down the wool first, then the cotton, then more wool on top of it and get the cotton in the middle. That is really good tea. All right, what colors do we want to do? What colors do we want to do? I wonder if I should try with the just straight merino. Let's see what we get from that. Because I have a lot of this. Because this is longer fibers. I kind of feel like this will work up maybe a little bit better. Yeah. That's really pretty. And I have a lot of this, and I've already made this into several. I've already made it into several hanks, including this gorgeousness. <laughs> Which, that was my first time plying, so I'm super proud of that. I noticed I'm not getting any on the edges. I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not, but... Yeah, that looks totally different. Look how smooth that looks. Alright, we'll throw some cotton in here. Oh, see, I did it too hard. One listening to myself from the last time. Oh, 
lighter hand. Went better. Lighter hand. See, this reminds me of like looking down at the ocean from the sky. You get the clouds, and you get the green and blue waters underneath. I'm trying to thin that out a little bit. I should have put a disclaimer at the beginning of this. Don't listen to this video with headphones on. Because the speaker to this camera is pointed straight down. Yeah, that was so much easier than the other stuff. We're going to get really creative. I'm just going to do them together. This is what makes art so fun, is just playing with it, not following the rules. I mean, you kind of have to follow some of the rules, but like, this is going to be so pretty spun up together. Ugh. This is what the blue and the green mixed with this yellow looks like. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> it also had a little bit of the teal. So it was this blue and this yellow and this blue and this green. Look at this cotton up here. I'll put it close to the top. I don't want to make it too thick. I think I can go a little bit thicker. Let's put a little bit. This blue has kind of a white spot on it. Kind of thin. This blue. Now, it still has the cotton in there, but the cotton is more blended in towards the middle. So hopefully, when it spins, I'm speaking like I know what I'm talking about, but I really don't. Hopefully, when it spins, it spins a little bit more um, easier for us. This definitely takes more grip than I have today. I know I'm off screen, but I, I very much am using my chest to hold the board. See if I can break it because it's not wanting to come apart right here. Yeah, these fibers are well stuck together. Ah, there we go. Come on. 
Come on. There we go. There we go. Whew. That was intense. <laughs> now what I'm learning is you got to wiggle this one and get the one out first. This feels much, much better than the first several. And I think it's because we're using the longer fibers of the Merino. That is beautiful. So maybe that's what we're going to have to do is mix the shorter fibers with the longer fibers to be able to use them better. But that is so beautiful and oceanic. Oh, all right. Let's see if we can grab this. I'm noticing it's a lot thicker in the middle. So maybe that's why I've seen all the videos break it in the middle like that. All the videos that, that I've seen, they break it in the middle. This is so much fun. I just really wish I had more strength. These things are really pokey, like they keep hitting me in my knuckles. Like, ow. There we go. a chunk. We missed a chunk. There we go. There we have it. Now this is not as pretty as the other side was because that's where all we put the dark blue at. But wow. All right. That's a lot of fun. Blending and creating our own fiber bases. Making our own merino cotton blend. Well, wool cotton blend, because that's not Merino, that's, I believe, Corydale. Which is just a different breed of sheep. Yeah, the, the ones on the top half are a little bit thicker, a little bit chunkier. So this is what we have so far. This is the best looking ones, I think. Those are really pretty. And then, these ones are a little bit haggard. Haggard. And then we also have these ones. So I think this method is the best method to do is to put down the wool first, then the cotton in the middle, and then the wool. Just kind of sandwich the cotton in, or otherwise it looks very... But I think it'll still spin up, and I think it will be fine. But, yeah. Was that a fun video, guys? We've been sitting here for a while. I didn't realize we've been sitting here for 45 minutes. I'm going to take another sip of my tea. And move our board back. And set our little roll legs down and hopefully the computer's like, oh yeah, that'll be a nice thumbnail. And by far these were the most beautiful. Look at that. My little snails. Tea and yarn. I mean, well it's not quite yarn yet, but it will be. Because my spindle is right here. <laughs> it is right there. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching me experiment with my new blending board. And thank you so much to Tracy for sending me the blending board. It is amazing. And I'm probably going to play with it all day. Um, really, really appreciate it so much. And this is going to be fun to play with and spin. I might go try to spin some of this up for you guys so you can see it. Um, maybe on Monday Makes. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.